Yeah, and it's also, I think, the fact that even if you are slightly behind, I think that you're going for this Orchids now, it, it's possible to just find these kills, uh, you know, around the map and just any of these kind of high value targets or even supports. Like, you get some of these kills and you can just kind of snowball off of this. And that's why I think the hero is, is quite strong right now. Yeah, especially when you combine it with the popular POS ones right now. Like, if there's one pattern a lot of these POS ones have, is that they have a way of getting into the fight quickly, right? Whether it's the PA, the lifesteal of Spectres. And obviously, Storm Spirit complements that because he can match the pace at which you're initiating with. Yes. However, he is banned out, so we don't really have to worry too much about that guy. Well, we get to talk about this one instead, because... Now, we haven't really seen much CM for a while, and something I have been noticing whenever I've been observing like the high-level games, when I've, I've been playing my own games, is Crystal Nova is pretty ridiculous in the early phases of the game. To the no, point definitely. where you forget and, about it. Yeah, I mean, this is also, like, the PA is going to have a pretty just solid game. I mean, you don't really have to worry about anything this game. You're going to have already built-in cleave from the Magnus. You're going to have the, the aura from the CM. I think the lane should be relatively decent, unless you're facing something very strong. Uh, you can just continuously spam both daggers and novas to, to secure range creeps. And of course, you're not the, the strongest of heroes up against Lifestealer, but... You generally don't pick this position five to to super counter the the carry. Uh, I mean, you you could go something like a shadow demon, but then you might just be overcommitting, you know, a wyvern etc. But it might just be too much. No, it's it's more about like in this type of game. That's probably a, a spammy type hero they're gonna like follow up with that's gonna benefit. But also Magnus now has the means to just constantly empower himself and people around him. Uh, as you said, the P on the lane could just spam out. Daggers constantly. And now this has yeah, so me thinking see. that this this could maybe be a Rubik 5 again, uh, and then you just get the tiny pos 4 Gilga. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, the tiny can still go into either the, the mid roll or position 4 as of right now. I'm expecting them to sort of pick their, their offlaner most likely in this next, next pick here. <laughs> and it's just going to be the Mars. But this time, probably the free. Yeah, I mean, I would be very surprised if he was anything other than a 3 right now. Or, or well, he could still be a mid-Mars, but... Yeah, I, I don't think if... I don't know if I've seen Supreme playing too much Mars recently, but yeah, it is definitely a possibility. Uh, I think the, the only issue is usually when you go Mars mid, like, you, you like to have the option to go for, like, a Deso, but in this game especially, your PA wants to, to be the one going for that. Yeah. And finally, we get an Undying pick. Hero of the moment, many times, finally coming out. And uh, it's a decent Undying game as well. You don't really have a, a Tombstone hitter right now on the side of Nip. Yeah, I don't know, though. Is this a... Uh, is it a position? Oh, you cut out. Position, is that going to be a position 3 Undying? Or what's the... Maybe they just Please might run the <laughs> Tiny. They might just run the Tiny as a position 3 here. I think Tiny might be the mid. Because they haven't got final pick, right? Yeah, uh, potentially make more sense and then like you, you could i think because misha likes the rubik they probably give it to him then they run the like post for undying which if you misha? get a good start misha misha is on nip sorry yeah why am i talking about misha uh not me whoops j4 uh j4 i think runs a lot of rubik as well so then like if you have the undying and the four it's the type of hero if you do get a good start to the game you get one or two items you're a really good frontliner yeah, I think maybe it's more likely that the Undying is just position 5 here, though. Uh, just Undying. I mean, if it's going to be a Magnus and a Mars, then Undying is quite strong. That's true. Yeah, I, I think it depends whether this... Okay, there we go. I was about to say, like, whether the Mag's thinking mid. I feel like you probably don't want the Mag in the mid now against the Batrider. Yeah, this is a very nice bat. I think there, there are no real threats to this bat radar uh, so far whatsoever. What do you do? Hmm, Matchups that could work here? Like, Nip... I don't know if you want something like a, a Pugna. It feels like it's a bit too weak against Tiny. It would give you tower push early, though. Uh, I think that sounds kind of scary. You want something that doesn't really oh, care okay. that much about the bat radar. Yeah, and it's going to be the Void Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason I was kind of thinking maybe Pugna is because uh, recently something very surprised happened in the last tournament where because of the early Neverward build, Pugnas were able to actually shut out Batriders, but 
mm-hmm. this is just easier to execute like it gives you that escape also it gives you a, a fine form of initiation from the mid yeah okay so they're gonna make some sort of adjustments here so it's gonna be the magnus and the against bat rider and rubik Undying is going with the Life Stealer, but that's going to be a Mars and a CM. And I think that thing should actually be kind of decent. It should be okay. Of course, the Life Stealer is just going to free farm, but I think Mars should be able to get something out of that lane. You can, I mean, you can get range creeps and everything. It should be okay. Um, I, I think Khan have some chances here to to kind of just, if they do well in the lanes, I think they have some chances to run this game over. Of course, if the game should go later, I definitely favor them. But Tiny is also. Both Tiny and Lifesteal are not the easiest heroes for a PA to deal with. Um, no. You know, Lifesteal buys the Halberd generally, and Tiny just has such high armor with the Grow, and you go for face boots, so you should be quite tanky. Also, later on, it might be we just see the cast of Tiny, right? Which has been more and more popular at the moment with the, the Blink into things yes. like the Yules, the E-Blade. Definitely possible. I guess like the, the the interesting part for me with this CM Mars lane is, is it's a lot of slow. So what we might see is if Naive kind of misplays in like level one, two, rages off cooldown, they might just run him down with slows and kill him off because there is that threat there. So I guess like we, we kind of given ups and downs of, of both sides, but like which draft do you, do you favor here? Like which one looks easier to execute? Um, I think it's a. Uh, it's kind of hard to say. I I kind of feel like uh, despite them having the Magnus P, I, I really like this Bad Rider last pick. Um, remains to see kind of how well he can actually do in this this off lane, but. I feel like they should be doing quite well here. I think potentially Magnus can just stack some camps for the PA and he can catch up through Ancients or or just farming the jungle. Mm. So I think he should be okay, but I feel like Khan should have some pretty good... Uh, they should have a good early game here. And uh, it just you just got to see if they can actually turn it into... transition it into to a win or, you know, getting a proper advantage. But yeah, I think Khan have some some good chances. That's true. Like you highlight the bat rider looks like a good game, and also the undying. Like this might be the type of game where we see maximum value because you can keep that pressure up. Because if there's anything you say about this top lane, mm-hmm. is that it's gonna be an insanely high value stick lane mm-hmm. for both sides. And uh, in that situation, I'd, I'd say like maybe the the one that gets the edge there is calm because you will have this undying right who's constantly able to span the decays. And you know if you catch PA with say minus eight strength and three sticky napalms on her she should die yeah all right there we go yeah i mean it's just the pa mag against that it's it, it can definitely get a little bit dicey yeah you can try for some cute plays maybe where the undying steps up too much and you just get the casual skewer under tower Maybe you can punish him there, but I think the the worrying part is when you get like probably two points in the flame break. So I'm expecting a flame break build from Cheshire Cat. Then you can just very easily melt mm-hmm. through the PA. Definitely, definitely can. Yeah, that's kind of the tricky thing when you don't have any of these heroes break. You know, the stickies, uh, the life stealer, juggernaut, uh, PL, etc. Playing against this battle hero can be scary. Let's see how it plays out. At the moment, Misha is moving towards the bot lane. They feel like maybe there's some kill potential at the rune, which, you know, with the slows, with the skewer, with the, the spear. Understandable. I don't know if Khan are going to step up. Naive has to sense something's not right as they're scouting around the top and they're not really seeing much right now. And I feel like Supreme, he didn't really have the best showing in the previous game. Of course, the matchup, I, I would say, is not incredibly favorable for him, but I think he overstepped his his area quite a few times, just going in too much with this kind of pain and got punished. So Yeah, whereas so he, this... He can bounce back. I was going to say, this lane's more kind of even, right? People tend to live on both sides, because usually what happens, the tiny goes in with an avalanche toss. It's not enough to kill you. You just walk away and bottle up and then get all your CS. Yeah, you can't really get tossed onto the tower because of the 
uh, the simulate. The, yeah. Yeah. Neither hero should really be be dying in this lane. And CS wise, it, it should be fairly hard for both of them to just deny the other one out having similar damage and both have a means of securing CS. New on the top. They did actually get the skewer back on a J4, but it's an undying. Like this is always the awkward part. And level one skewer isn't as impressive as you'd think. Yeah, basically the undying is just going to force a almost a 1v1 P and the bat ladder, which is going to be pretty good for this P. I say again, you think it's going to be pretty good for the, the bat or the PA? It should be pretty good for the bat rider, yeah. I mean, the Undying can pretty a 1v1 between the PA and the bat And just Oops. going for a 1v1 between these two heroes it should be quite quite good for this bat rider. He should get a bit tower of a hits, freebie but... there. He sniped the Cory as well. Like, that's the bigger deal for him there. The, the tower hits afterwards are just a nice bonus. He won the bot lane. Save a life, CS and just as well as naive. Like no one taking a lead here, but and this feels like one of those lanes where they just kind of new they nullify each other's kill potential, right? Yeah, I mean you get that bulwark and you shouldn't really be too scared. Yeah, I mean he's going for the the spear and rebuke at level two, but it's just understandable. You shouldn't really be that pressured by Rubik in the early levels. No, it should not really be a, be an issue. I think uh, kind of just looking for these mid laners once the, the ball rolls into it to be the ones making things happen. Supreme just experiencing the annoyance of a tiny. Oh, is that the ball cut? Yeah, the ball's on its way out. He's got fairy fire as well, so it shouldn't really be possible for Young G to burst him at the moment. <laughs> Is it me or does Magna still feel kind of ridiculous? Like the, the changes around in power, right? They were targeted at getting rid of this whole idea of support Magnus, yet we still see it so often. Yeah, I mean the hero just I mean empower, you know, e even if you nerfed it, it's still such a strong spell. I don't know if going here on this uh <laughs> on dying giving him double the cases is gonna be the way to go here. And the stick charges. He's just a very happy camper right now. JFL's like, okay, please keep keep coming at me. My bat is just free farming and you guys are looking awkward right now. Casually sitting at 1.1k HP. Mm. Has a salve for afterwards as well. Definitely a peculiar one. I mean, and this is the most beneficial way for them to like end up playing against that, right? Because Charlie has the, the maxed out wand at that point. So you can't aggress him on the lane. The best thing that can happen is J4 drags both of their attention away. A bit of a weird one. But we weren't expecting this to be a killer lane. This was all about what happens afterwards when, you know, Mag gets a few levels and he just becomes Charlie's Empower uh, booster. Yeah, he does have to get some levels for that to happen, though. Okay, I'll just steal all the terms. Ooh. Oh, Young G gets no. it. And they bring so many heroes as well. That's that's a frustrating moment. Especially considering they more or less just left Tiny to his device and be like, dude, you either get lucky or you get screwed. That being said, he's getting screwed a little bit on the XP. So Supreme will hit six first. Doesn't matter as much for the tiny, but it might give Supreme an opening. It's just hard without the full bolt now. Gilgar in the bot lane. Looks like we Charlie finally here. get our first blood. Spear through. Right. Gets the kill. Normally, normally. I believe Charlie was close to death. Right, seven sticky napalm. Yeah, exactly. He was thinking a few, few of those. Unfortunately for Cheshire Cat, he doesn't have a point in flame break yet, so. Interesting, he went matter. for the, the Firefly build actually, because I, I would have expected the Flame Break, like, like we said earlier, right? Both these heroes have means to get away from you. Oh, MG. Really wanted that bounty, so now they want his buoy. They will very quickly get. 
traded his booty for the bounty. Which is appropriate because he just got spanked. Some people might not think that's worth it. <laughs> His teammates will because they just got gold, PyCat, okay? If you're naive right now, you're like, damn, I just got money. What up? I'm not sure how much naive is going to be able to use that money early. Wait, what? Why have I got chat will? What? Hmm? I don't know. Okay. Young G's typed hashtag Dota chat wheel message missing hero. Oh yeah, that happens now in this. Uh, I don't know. It's happened to me a few. <laughs> when you when you say that a hero is missing, it just says. I think it's the void spirit. When you ping the void spirit, is oh, missing. It goes. Oh okay. Dota. Mm -hmm, <laughs> See, blah, blah, blah. I never noticed that because I'm the one always playing the void spirit. Oh yeah. Go be a spam. Cheshire cat. Charlie. Dive Charlie here, but. It's five stacks. He needs to be careful. Charlie? The soul rip is going to be turned on here. Charlie? Moving in, Young G's there to get the kill to Supreme as well. They'll bring him low. He's able to move away for the moment, but they're going to keep on hunting. Dissimilate will not save him as the tree gets tossed in his face. I, I, and while that's happening, Gilga does fall in the bot lane, but the bigger heads are claimed in the top. And, you know, this is the the power and undying. You bait yourself, and now you're going to lose more. Misha's in trouble. The tombstone is down. Young G doesn't care because he's got enough health to sustain, and they'll just run him down and right click him out. Should be a very early tower as well. That's the other thing. You put a tombstone like that, it just makes it easy for you to clear the creeps up and keep your creeps alive. Yeah, this should mean though that I think the Magnus, he should be... I mean, one of these two heroes needs to go top and soak this experience. I think it could be the Magnus and P can just kind of run around in the jungle. Of course, it's going to be very slow with just the level one and power, but once Magnus gets some levels, it's going to be a lot easier for both of them. You know, my worry is this guy they need to get rid of. in trouble up here. Yep. He's definitely gone here. Very much done. <laughs> Misha's like, I want the kill. Mine. Won't cost them it. They still managed to clean it up in the end. Charlie gets it. And that, that's the key piece, right? Like Because if they don't start shutting the bat rider down, nobody can soak top. Because I'm expecting Cheshire Cat's going to go for the boots to travel build. We're seeing a lot of bats still going for that. And uh, yeah, I mean, despite the Supreme dying just now in the top lane, they are still tied on experience for now. Saber light. Oh, Marina. Saber light's found a target. They'll move in on the Gilga. Young G walks away. Says goodbye, old friend. I don't know you. Oh, Saber light definitely having a good game, by the way. Imagine the life still up being at the top of the net worth chart. Already fast on his way towards the Vlads that his PA will very much enjoy. Yeah, and I think also thanks to that uh, kill that Charlie got on that uh, Batrider, he's also, I mean, he's kind of up there. Sure, he's he's behind the, the Lifestealer, but he's actually ahead of the Batrider. Mm. Also, Bat, he, uh, he requires less gold to function, but he's going for that Greedy Booster Travel build we were expecting. Yeah, but this is also a PA that has to, I mean, he gets to rush Desso, right? He doesn't need to go for this Battle Fury thanks to the Magnus. He's going to be quite happy. Supreme. Hmm. I mean, it might have been 10 HP survival, but I think maybe if he tossed the tree, Young G might have had to kill though. They're going to be kind of juicy here. Ooh. Or, ooh. A tiny with Royal Jelly. Now that. That's a good feeling. Hmm. Who else gets the jelly? Are we going to do the typical one too, or are we going to give it to a real hero? The there we go. Got it. Yes. Nice. <laughs> I was about to say, it's like, you know, you get these games if you're like, I am carry, give me jelly. You're like, you're a life stealer, idiot. You don't need jelly. I mean, don't you still want the jelly, though? I, I think this game, I actually think it's good on Battle Royale. Yeah. Yes, definitely. You know, Cheshire Cat would be Cheshire jelly Cat if he here, did I feel like he jelly. could just turn on this. I mean, I feel like he starts he's stacking the stickies soon. here. I think he should be... Yeah. Supreme could be in trouble here if he follows too much. I mean, J4 has dragged his reinforcements away, so Supreme needs to retreat, but the last is going to drag him about. Shockwave to try and interrupt it. We'll skew him away. Mr. Cat says, thank you very much. I'm still going to go for him, but he might bait himself. Remnant controls him up. He's still going. He might have enough time to finish this. It's going to be very close for Supreme. The Astral Step is coming off cooldown, though. Able to get away. 
I think he's very sad right now that he does not have this just the one point in frame break. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he would have secured, I think, more than one kill already. And now he's going to be the kill. I don't it's, it's very questionable. We, we said on the lane already, flame break looks very good. And I mean, even just one point is so valuable. I yes. Think. Maybe it's like the, you bait yourself like, oh, I want max out Firefly. And then you're like, oh, but max out Sticky Napalm now. It's like, you probably could have just left Sticky Napalm at two at that point. And the good game continues for Sabalite. And it's getting more concerning. Like, that Flads is going to be well-timed. Like, he's going to dish out a lot of physical damage as well with the rebukes if he gets the empower on him as well. Like, that's that's the other scary part. Like, the initial physical damage in this game is very high. Well, that's a pretty big ancient stack for the PA. Oh. 3.9k before the stack. Now let's see where he ends up. Just watch, watch errors go. It's also well. very silly that you can actually do this while being blurred. Yes, that's it's been a thing for a long time. It's been pretty Durham. Some people might say that's Bork. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very Bork. Smells like Bork, because this smells like pig crap. Like, why is this a thing? Why is Magnus a thing? Why is Blur a thing? Yeah, so you get some 700 gold off of that. And then also the supports get the stack gold as well. It's, it's pretty tasty. Oh, well, whoever stacked it. Like he has arrived too late. He is sad. He's like, damn it. Could have caught them being greedy. But, you know, it, that's the also the really ridiculous part about PA, right? Like, like you said, the blur not revealing you on creeps. Compare another game we saw today, right? Where Skidder was on a, a faceless void and he was taking stacks. He was on like a third of his HP. It's punishable. PA, really not punishable. RP. Coming out. Tombstone is down. Chase the forward on the saber light. On the side, Avalanche tosses out. Error is still alive, though. Buys enough time. Try and zone them away, but won't save Misha's life. Free dead on the side of Nip. Khan, strike back fast. And the arena was even committed by Saberlight. And look who's got the empower now. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. We yeah, forgot yeah. the Rubik factor in this game, didn't we? <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Naive is like, go stack for me now, guys. Gogur is like, yes, master. I want my 40% gold. Supreme's going to be forced to use all his spells here. You just... Oh, okay, they don't get the second one out of him. They cast down him. I mean, you always feel bad as a Void Spirit because level one Astral Step is such a short range and, and the recharge time, like... It prevents you from making those aggressive plays you, you want to be doing in this stage of the game when you have this XP lead. Or had, and this Empower is going to be pretty easy to steal continue for this Rubik. And it's going to be kind of beneficial for Tiny and the, for the Life Stealer. Mm -hmm. Everything on, on the Mag Kit, right? Like, this is one of the, the typical counters whenever you see a team pick Mag. You pick the Rubik because any spell you get feels good, you know? Skewer can get you into it. And the Lift RP is one of the easiest things hey, to steal. Don't forget the Lift into Skewer combo. Mm, see? Options. That's what we want here. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised Misha even decided to level RP in this game. I'm surprised Misha even decided to level any of his spells. If you yeah. don't, Ruby can't steal anything. True. We have suggested that one before. But I, I feel like it might be detrimental to your ability to, I don't know, do stuff. Nah. <laughs> no, you think? No. Just walk and nah. ward. Just walk and ward, my friend. Well, even with the level spells, you won't be getting out of that one. Gilgo was like, I ain't even going to risk stealing a spell. I'm happy with this Empower life. Although it's about to run out. No, oh, no, wait. Give it to the carry. Yeah, there we go. Efficiency. The hunting top, by the way. Save lights. Uh oh. Problem with having these lads means you're very easy to catch. Lasso has got him and Tiny's on his way. Avalanche into the toss and the damage is enough to kill off the Mars. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised he didn't go for something like, let's say, a Yules. Or a pipe. could have been... Yeah. I mean, just anything to kind of get rid of these sticky sticky stacks. I mean, I, I feel like... Oh, RP! Everything for Naive. <laughs> he's confused right now. He's like, why so many heroes for me? Gilgo gets the Astral Step. And it would have been a good steal if he could have lived. But there's no chance. Didn't really have the mana to get more than one step away anyway. 
Yeah, it's gonna be the best of complete on oh, Charlie. Probably going into a BKB, maybe Basher next. There's still a net worth lead building for Khan though. It is concerning because yeah, when you think about the way Nip, oh, what was that for? Right, that, that'll that'll help a little bit. A bit more gold in the, the pocket of Nip. But the, the thing I was gonna say in this game, you are very much you know a four protect one type draft, right? It's gonna be the Charlie show. It's going to be the the Charlie show for for quite some time. Yes, potentially Supreme once he gets axe, he can do do some things here. That's the thing. You're always gonna you know you gotta have presence as voice for it, even as the Mars who now say blood stands. He just needs a blink, which is what he's going for next. But eventually you'll kind of kind of fall off. Whereas you know the life steal is going to continue to accelerate. Tiny's burst damage in the mid game doesn't let up and. Bat Rider with his quick BKB could very easily just start to shut down people in these fights. It's his next item of choice. He's got the blink already, so initiation gets very easy for Khan. And that's like maybe the yeah. big comparison, right? Is is the offlaners here. Like because of this item build, Saberlight can't match the initiation right now at all. And yeah, Nathan's going for the Silver Edge build. I, I'm really not a fan of this at all. Uh, I've seen it uh, before, and I think. I, I much prefer this MKB as a as a counter to PA. I think the Silver Edge is... I feel like it very rarely works. Uh, the, the short duration is kind of awkward. Of course, the Echo Saber can be nice to have, but I just feel like committing for the Silver Edge is... Sableye from is what I've seen, at least. Sad, sad boy. He tried to big brain it. He actually put his Vlads in his backpack to try and get rid of the aura so they didn't think he was around, but they find the pick still. I think you're right on the, the Silver Age, by the way. Like the, the thing that I say on that is it makes sense when you've got no way of initiating, right? Like the Silver Age can be a form of initiation for your carry, but you've got a Bat Rider and a, a Tiny. You don't lack that in this game. Yeah, and the... Yeah, I, I don't know. You, you want to be able to hit this B at any time, right? You don't want to rely on this. On this what? On the Silver Edge hit. Oh, you don't want to have to rely on kind of the break, right? You, you want to be able to hit, attack this, fight this PA whenever. Not just when your Silver Edge is ready. Definitely. The Silver Edge is pretty quick. And he's just pajamas don't know about it. Save lights, put the flies in the backpack again. He's trying to big brain himself. Gilga is going to find them. Left in, drop them. They need to finish the Roche quick if they want to have it. Naive is going to be left in the pit to do it. On his own, and with the burns and the sticky napalm stacks, it's enough. Naive does get the Aegis. What cost them is poor little Gilga. I think if they would have just gone in there, you know, full force, I think it would have been very dangerous for for Khan. I think but they were scared they might be respecting the, the tombstone a little bit. True, and they don't have arena either, right? Like it's still only a level one arena, and Saberlight did use it awkwardly top. Maybe just putting too much emphasis on that. This... Yeah, Charlie though, getting closer to his BTB. Mm -hmm. Almost caught up now with Naive in Networth. And yes, Naive has has shifted away from this Silver Edge idea. Be. Gone back into the MKB even, which I think is a much much better and safer choice. No scouting out for Oh no, Supreme! <gasps> Cuts away just in time. That was close. He almost screwed himself with the resonant pulse to farm a bit quicker. They're still hunting yeah, though. Bat Rider though, he's very, very quick with this. Mm hmm. And Save Life Light's gone. Pests. No way to fight back. He tried with the spear, but Rachel lasts too long. Error identifies the problem quickly. He's like, well, they're definitely getting top, but I, you know, I need to shove out this mid lane, or it might be two towers instead of one. Charlie kind of just continuing to live in this triangle area in the bottom lane. And he's getting closer to his BKB now. They really need to get to this, this BKB and the Axe on the Void Spirit so that they can start fighting. And not just concede all of these towers and map. Well, it's a good thing the Axe has arrived for Supreme. Time and Shooter more or less match up. Charlie, just a few hundred more gold. They do still have to worry about the Bat Rider. But of course, now having that AoE silence, they can stop him when he tries to initiate. Until he has yeah, Misha is still very far away from this blink dagger, but 
I think they should still be able to do some some fighting once they get to this BKB on the PA. If they can burst down the Batrider, then the PA pretty much has free free reign in these fights. Oh, th this is triple power spike, by the way. The blink is finally there for Sableye as well. Khan, it's a case of whether they suspect this is coming as well. Like, you, you must have been keeping track of your opponent's item slots and realizing, oh, it's been a while since we've seen anything new. Yeah, Supreme here. Are they going to go on the white spread? No, no. They know it's a bait. The smoke on the high ground. The smoke into different areas. Yeah, you can already see they, they're expecting a defense around this tier one. Even if they don't find anyone, they're going to be set up for whoever comes to defend it. Yeah, this is some smoke on smoke action. Smoking kills people. It's just a matter of who. They'll realize now what's going on. Streetway pushing in. They might frantically rush towards their death. J4 gets the ult off, puts down the tombstone as well. Goes set to protect him from Charlie, who's now going to turn and try and deal with the tombstone. But turned on BKB. He's low on HP, though. Able to be away. Misha looking for some opportunity to RP, but he's only got one target on last on the side. Mars did get the arena down, but he's stuck in the middle of it. He doesn't want to be here anymore. Mag is gone before he can use the RP. Sableye as well. And what looked like Nip might actually have the advantage as Khan rushed towards the mid lane. Backfires very quickly when your PA has no health left and has to BKB. Yeah, and Charlie also just poured it out there. I mean, I don't know if necessarily I've actually it might have been difficult, but well, you, he you pours out, out there. He, he just uh, Charlie just decided to pour it out while his BKB was still up. It was kind of risky. The bad rider could have jumped on top of him in the last though, but he was blurred, so it's, it's okay. -ish. It's just you're kind of selling your team at that point. Yeah, and they knew it. They knew that Naive, like, all he had to do really is just stay on top of the PA and, and screw around with her. And the moment Misha skewers in, like, you can kind of see that everything is just reactionary from there on out. We are seeing how easy it is for the Bat to fight up against the Mars when you think about the matchup of these two. Naive just gonna chomp on the creeps. He's got this Aegis. They don't want to commit too much for a little silence him up. Pin him as well. Avalanche trying to drop silence. It's gonna be there. No toss. BKB from Charlie. Arena's going to go down. They got rid of the Aegis. Now they need to get out. They need to get out quick. Cheshire Cat looking in. Wants a target here. No last two for 15. He's just going to try and slow them down. Supreme needs an out. Arena's going to be thrown down. Traps them in. A steal that they maybe didn't want to give over. But Saberlight, his arena is not anywhere near good enough to keep them from pursuing. Cheshire Cat's still hunting. Last two coming off cooldown. No dice. They'll back up. Just feels like every time. Well, oh, you know, Khan, they're not. They're not killing everyone on Nip, right? Like, Nip, they aren't losing the PA, sure. But even on this one or two pickoffs that Khan are getting each fight is definitely favoring them at this stage. I mean, they just got two cores. You know, they lost their Aegis on the Lifestealer, but they're going to start sieging this tier 3. Lifestealer is getting very close to this MKB. They just forced out the Glyph. I think uh, all things are coming up, Khan. Nope. <laughs> Right now, Nip are probably screaming out that name like a bad reenactment of a Star Trek movie. They are definitely getting screwed by him here. You can see, uh, Charlie's trying to go towards that bash in X, but the problem is these big BKB charges being used and nothing really being gained. J4 just wasting so much time of the ninjas. They're going to try and move in. That's the second Astral step. Supreme needs an out right now. Luckily, his team is nearby. Misha still does not have a blink. He's nowhere near it. Lift's going to come up from Gilga. Traps in the Mars. The irony is he's trapped in his own arena. It will be chased onto by Charlie. The moving in. Saberlight says, I can do a better arena. Does pin Cheshire Cat to the wall. Buyback's going to come up from Gilga. Undying is low. Ghost Hep is going to keep him alive. Tombstone's still up, though. RP is going to be a whiff. Because they already got the kill under Naive. Now they can pursue looking for more. BKB gets forced out of Cheshire Cat, but he's able to move away. Fight is taken, and it's in favor of ninjas in pajamas. Yeah, they managed to just stay on top of the Lifestealer there. They they finished it off with the RP. I think uh, Naive was kind of out of position there. He's just trying to finish his MKB and... And they pay for it. Creed does get a little bit punished. And that's the case. Maybe ninjas can start to, to build momentum off this. If you can now try and play on Khan's side of the map, you can really start to exploit what should be a, a farm differential with the Magnus and Power on the PA. Yeah, and I think that PNL, like, once he gets to level 16, once he gets to this basher, I think he's going to be a real threat in this game. I'm, I'm really hoping the Batrider goes for Yes, he does. He's queuing up the Shiva's Guard, and I think this is a great choice. He's actually the top net worth in his team, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, not something you see every day from this position 3 Batrider. Usually you see him more in a 
kind of you know supporting for Brawl, but this game he's he's up there you know in terms of net worth and i i think him getting the shiva's guard is gonna be negating a lot of damage from this nip team the pa yes you have a lot of attack speed with the phantom strike but when when you're not having this it becomes very difficult to attack once there's the Shiva's guards in this game. Well, not not just that. The Phantom Strike is going to be gone at this rate because, you know, Tiny, just a few gold off the Silver Edge is flying out now. Well, this is why they decided to switch it up. They, Tiny went, you know what? Life still if you really want the break in this game, I'll cut you a break. I'll cover you on that one. Now the MKB complete as well. The timing on these two items could just eviscerate the Phantom Assassin in the next fight. No RP for 20 as well. So if you strike quick as Khan, you'll catch him off guard. They're pinging Gilga, who did buy back previously. Are they baiting themselves, though? Just can't moves in. Look at the last two straight away. Onto the PA to bring her down with the BKB and the Rage Active. They've got the damage to get through him. No. BKB just in time. Now Error with the Freeze Field trying to do enough damage. Tiny's going to go down. Error is killed off in the end by Naive. And Saberlight trying for the TP away. The lift's going to be there to drop him. They did get the PA kill. They can't clean up Supreme, but a free for one exchange. The one that Khan will take. Yeah, very nice initiation there, Cheshire Cat finding PA, and she was just too low HP. I think your only chance to kind of stay alive there was to just try to keep man fighting with the help of this Vampire Fangs and the Vlads of the Mars, but he just, he tried to run, and yeah, it was just not possible. Yeah, a little bit of panic. I mean, you can understand why, why he feels a bit worried about that. You're low HP, you can't reinitiate on the Naive, right, because he's got the MKB. Uh, the Undying has the Ghost Scepter as well. It, you need to find the Rubik. If you don't find the Rubik, there's there's no really anyone you can lifesteal off of in that, considering the plate mail's already on Cheshire Cat. Still... Yeah, there's actually a freezing field right now on the Rubik. Oh, Jesus. Good lordy lord. Yeah, he's getting close to that Blink Dagger as well. Not to mention also he has the Never Shore with that freezing field. It's still only level one, mind you. As Zero hadn't hit level 12 yet. It's still going to hurt. Of course, you don't expect to get too much of a freezer field off. You are up against the AoE silence from the Voice Spirit. Speaking of Voice Spirit, leading the charge. J4 is going to break into them, though. Got the mech, but no chance to use it. He's just gone. Arena. Okay. Sableye's just going to not want to talk about that one. And Misha. That's, that's the, the blink, blink reveal. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, that, that is the pain in the ass factor about that hero. The movement speed you get, you just rage and run away. And now they're going to run straight towards Supreme. Jump in, lasso, jump out on top of him. The damage is high, but the avalanche is enough to bring him down. Saberlight could not even throw out the spear due to it. They'll jump in now, Naive. Oh, B catches onto two, going to drag them in. Able to get through the lifesteal. Cheshire Cat, BKB trying to run away with the bash. Coming out, might secure the kill. He can't really escape quick enough here. Oh, no, he gets out. But Saberlight. Spear still on cooldown, not able to find Cheshire Cat. He limps away on that sliver of HP, but they did get the big kill on the life still nonetheless. Uh, he, he really needs to get to, to this AC so that he can actually sustain, because right now he's just dying too quickly to this PA. And, and because you know he's going to focus on damage, you can guarantee that you know he's not going to pick up a casual plate mail. He, if, if anything, he's going to go for the Hyperstone first, which means there is still that, that burst potential if, if you get stunned. If Rage runs out, Charlie can go in. Look at this. Just relentless. Kind of like, well, I mean, you know, we call that fight a draw, mate. Smoke and go. We're going to set up for Roche because our life stealer is up. And if he has two lives, PA is done. Oh, no voice spirit. They haven't got the last two for five more seconds. The Firefly is making it a little bit obvious that there's smoke, though. Not really the ideal it. way to use the smoke, but uh, it zones nip away, shall we say. And now it's their turn to smoke. No RP for 50. They are wholly reliant on Saberlight's initiation being tip-top shape. And always hiding this Vlad so they don't know about the aura on the creeps. A very smart god on this Mars. Gilga. <sighs> no. Can't say okay. Come into the pit. We'll welcome you with open arms. Who's going to go for the room first? Illusion. But there it is. They drag out with the last two. They go for the damage to try and get him low. Charlie bursts through and dead. Buyback will come out. 
Supreme needs an out. Link is going to be popped. Gets up the high ground on the astral step. The arena. Gilga gets the spear. Pin Saberlight against the wall. And as his team arrives, they'll clean up the Mars. And PA's buyback not really able to do anything as they do not have control of the outpost. He couldn't TP across. Yeah, his port was also 20 seconds on cooldown. So despite buying back, there was nothing really he could do. I th they feel uh, now they're going to buy hard. back. And they, they really need to commit now. They need to get this Roche. They need to get this fight. Mm -hmm. They did have another smoke. So they are going to be able to, if they find any sort of initiations, they could be able to get this. I'm just gonna go straight into the pit. This is very risky here. The last is not available for 35 though. They, they understand it's their best opportunity. As soon as Charlie bought back, Sableye had to commit as well. Spear gets J4 pretty deep. Does have the Ghost Step to protect for the moment, but the magic damage is too high. All buy back. Charlie goes in on a Cheshire Cat, trying to burst through him, but the plate mail is doing its work. Too much armor to get through. It'll screw them, and now they're buying enough time that Lassie's gonna be there in 15. And this Roche is looking not so feasible for ninjas and pajamas anymore. They go. They know they have to get it. This is the lose or win moment in the game. Supreme Slinkers pop. Lift. By enough time, Cheshire Cat has got the lasso. The stun's going to land. They ping out Charlie. Charlie moves forward onto J4. Trying to get him. Lasso's going to come out. The burst through with the open wins. Trying to get through him quick enough. Charlie's gone. That's his die back. Arena is not going to work out for them as they push him out. Saberlight, we chased onto. Magnus is dead before he used the RP. And Saberlight has nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. These zombies go bump in the night. Supreme will be able to get out, but the damage is already done. Now down 9k. There's going to be an Aegis in the hands of Naive. Your PA has gone for 75 seconds, which is more than enough time for Khan to take a lane. And Cheshire Cat just keeps finding initiation after initiation. Oh, I think uh, it's a very, very nice kind of patient play from Cheshire Cat, but also I think a bit too maybe over eager on Charlie. Kind of just... I'm I'm not sure if he's underestimating the damage they can actually deal during the time of the lasso, or if he thinks he's gonna survive. But I mean, he's gotten caught up by this now. I think it's three times. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a that's a dieback. There's also an Aegis on the life stealer who's gonna finish up AC very soon. I think this game is uh, starting to look uh, very difficult now for NIP. And I'm really glad that I went for that play mail as well instead of going for the, the hyper stone because it, it just meant that once again, PA, yeah. even right at the end Definitely. of the last two, you don't have anyone to life steal. And you know, it's just the way that J4 positions himself in that Roche fight is perfect. Like, you're an undying at a Roche fight. People are going to want to get rid of you first. And all they need is for PA to reveal herself and wham, bam, thank you, man, you're gone. Wham, bam, indeed. Thank you, ma'am. Your buildings are gone too. Spear is cute, but will not hit the mark. Cheshire Cat pops the Lincolns, gets silenced up. BKB gets activated, though. Stands his ground. They'll move away. They realize they may have made a wee little mistake with that lasso. Forgetting about the Lincolns. The Hunter's on. J4, they're not going to initiate on them. They learned their lesson last time, or did they? Charlie's going in. They're on the high ground away. Flesh Golem gets activated, able to heal up. Tombstone's going to go down. They turn around onto him. Lift is down to Charlie before he can use the BKB. Activate it now. Moving in. RP's going to come out. They do stun up on the Naive as well, but there's still an RP. Rubik trying to move across. It's going to be dodged out. They need to retreat. Charlie looking to escape. Error goes the other way, trying to break up the fight. Supreme Remnant will be sidestepped. Young G is hunting forward. They want the kill to Charlie. That's how they end the game. And the trees are going to come at Tarsen. As they bring one down, they'll get the second. The RP, not going to be good enough. They just use it to control up Magnus. Move forward, look for air out. They'll try and finish him off. Misha trying to escape. They'll get the kill into the CM. But the hunt is on. And even if they don't find more kills, they've already found the base. And they can go for it. Fireback comes out from a CM. Remnant control is good. And Rubik is down for 90. But... You know, that kill would have been cool maybe five minutes ago. At this stage, Khan don't care. Moving in. Avalanche toss. And goodbye, Magnus. Good luck dueling enough damage to the tiny or the life steal on your own. PA still dead for 35. And they're just going to go hit some tier fours. I'm not sure that they can actually drone this, but... But maybe they're, they're going to be tiny. able to... They're going to get through the towers at least. Yeah. They'll or decide they're against They're just going to take it safe. Play it safe. I mean, the PA now after this die back and then another death. Yeah. The net worth is just, it's its not there anymore. Uh, no. I, I think uh, once again in these fights, just Cheshire Cat, uh, he's just really, he's, he's, he's making this game very, very, very easy for his teammates. I think his positioning and his play so far has been very solid. At mm -hmm. MVP for sure. And he's now going to have that Shiva's complete as well. He's got Shiva's plus buyback on a boots to travel Batrider. Yeah, with the haste rune. Not yep. to forget. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's like, well, you know, Phantom Strike does have a cast range talent, but I think even with that in mind, Cheshire Cat might be able to drag you far enough away from your team that it doesn't matter. To be honest, actually, he's not even trying to drag. It, let's be honest, the last few fights, you don't drag the PA anyway. You just hold her on the spot and naive wails on her. Yeah, no, there's no need to. Just you got? PA anywhere. Tevas. Then the cape will protect. Then move in with the BKB. Drag out Mars. They fine. We'll take you instead. Right now, Sableye's like, where is my Glimmer Cave? They'll move in, they'll try and punish this chest cat. People low, but they try and heal him up. They're always... No, turn around. Nice RP coming out. Charlie is low on HP, though. He needs to escape quickly. They're going to move forward. Naive goes in. Nice kill from J4. They're able to pop the Linkers. Move forward on the Supreme next. Young G. Hunter looking for it. Avalanche toss on the spot. He'll bring down the Misha Magnus. Buyback will come out, but for what? You're a post 5 mag without an RP. You feel like a shadow of your former self. And GG gets called Ninja in Pajamas looking like a shadow of their former selves as Khan 2 over them. And I've realized it now. It's come to fruition in my mind, Pycat. We wondered, you know, is this is this the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? And I realized it's actually the 2007 remake. So it's the crappy version. Yeah, and while the Karo Khan might be all pawns and no hope, it seems that there's a lot of hope for Khan going forward in this tournament. There is. And with it, you know, CIS people, they shed a tear, Pycat, because... They got baited at the start of the day, you know? They were like, if you looked at the two rosters, and this is not to take anything away from Khan, but you know, a lot of people were hyped for Seneco's roster with Live to Win. And while they're still in the tournament, they got knocked down by Mod Golems. You know, after a good start, CIS fans probably feeling a little bit butthurt, a little bit annoyed. But then to see Khan come through and 2 0 ninjas in pajamas like this, that's. Mwah. CIS dotes, baby. Yeah, overall, just the. Uh... A nice performance here. I mean, they had the draft and they, they had to execute and they did. I mean, I, I, I said that I, I kind of favored Khan here in this game. Like the, the, the position five Magnus, it's a very greedy draft that they have on NIP. And I, they didn't really, they didn't manage to make it work. They got punished too early. I think the rotations were not really on point. And yeah, just, I think just not a good overall solid performance by, by the Khan squad. No, absolutely. Well played. Uh, that means Khan will continue through. Uh, of course, Ninja in Pajamas, they're not eliminated. They're in the lower bracket they'll be playing in the coming days. Uh, but that does bring us to a close. Uh, our coverage is done. Uh, we didn't get invited to the super secret top spot, like hidden security, high, you know, government funded BTS bunker of glory. Uh, but I'm sure there's plenty of people who are going to take you through the action for the remaining days at EUCIS. So we'll bid you farewell. We'll get out of your hair and we'll let you get on with more dotes. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the tournament.